Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John North the Berserker. You don't even need a watch. And he was actually looking for a watch at Target the other day. Yeah. You know what time it is. It's Thursday night. It's 10 p.m. It's time for Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursdays with the Berserker. Nice. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Insiders Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m. But... We're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you, without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling, and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Mighty Rockin' each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans, spring kicks off with the in-studio return of the Berserker, John Nord, Thursday, April the 14th, to kick off Back to the 80s Live Wrestling in Legends Fan Fest weekend. The Berserker returns for Wrestling Insider Throwback Thursday tapings, live episodes, a cyber autograph signing, and more. Check out Boston Wrestling's exclusive print that the Berserker will sign to you live on the air. The big man kicks off three big days of action, excitement, and memories. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s live event and Legends Fan Fest, Saturday, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. See and meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton, the Wild Berserker, the Indestructible Warlord, Dangerous Danny Davis, and if you great fans step up and get those VIP packages and tickets now, we'll add more 80s WWF Legends. VIPs take part in exclusive Q&A sessions in an 80s Legends group photo before doors open to all fans for an autograph photo fan fest and a night of hot in-ring action for memories that'll last a lifetime while helping our friends from Make-A-Wish. Tell your friends, tell your family, it's the wrestling celebration decades in the making. Lock in the best seats in the party now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live April 16th. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside. It's Dan Marotti along with my Thursday night partner in crime here on Wrestling Inside is when we throw it back to Thursday nights. We've been talking about a crazy summer of 1991 in July, the Zahorian trial, yeah. Hogan making a buffoon of himself on Arsenio Hall, yep. Vince calling the talent together to say that real legit steroid testing is a coming. <laughs> but down south in WCW, uh, there was turmoil in a different way. Uh, the tension between WCW world champion Nature Boy Ric Flair and Jim Hurd had come to a head. Hurd uh, basically told Nate he could go take a walk. Uh, Nature Boy put down quite a bit of money on a deposit on that championship belt and he decided to go north with the uh, at that point, the yep. NWA yep. World Heavyweight yep. Championship belt. Yeah, I mean, what a I way to Rick coming. What a way to spruce up the top, the top of yeah. the cards yeah. in WWF. First, Sid comes in after he told yeah. WCW to go, you know, buck themselves, and now you have the world champion of the rival company coming to <laughs> WWF. I mean, yeah. do you consider it just luck at the worst of times when the company was dealing with so much stress and worry, or? I mean, those are two big pickups in a short period of time yeah. for that company. Well, they were run, um, the guys that came there. All, I, I can I, I remember Rick the, the first day he came, and uh, I don't know what day it was, um, but when Rick came there, me and Hawk ribbed him so bad. Oh, really? We put cottage cheese in his bed under the covers. Got the maid's key. We did all kinds of sh stuff that 
you know, you did back in the 80s when you were real young. And we just ribbed him to death. Now, Ric Flair is an Iron Man. The guy did it, wrestled probably more nights than anybody ever. Um, and I respect the heck out of him for that. Um, but Flair, it was, it was funny because the testing was big then, and you had like the media coming in by the locker rooms, and uh, and Flair going, um, and one of the media guys is saying, are, "Are you on steroids?" And Flair says, "Nope, test me." Holds on his arm, and I walk by him, and I go, "Rick, you don't look like you're on steroids." <laughs> what do you mean? Test me. You don't look. Of course you're not on steroids. You don't look like you're on them. You know, and then he walked by with his robe and Wayne Bloom, one of the Beverly Brothers, goes, um, he looks like a grandma going to his bed. I mean, we were <laughs> on Rick. We did not. Rick came in and everybody's fighting for their spot. You know, you love the guys over the years, and I love you, brother, and I love you, brother. But listen, what a lot of the guys forget is the backstabbing so you can move up the ladder. The backstabbing to move up the ladder, you know. It was just hideous. It was really bad. Um, uh, I know, I, I'm sure there was guys talking about me just going, yeah, John, you, you can't really trust anything he's going to do. He's great, you know, he's a wild one, you can't. But, uh, you know, I, had, I ended up doing all right. But anyways, um, Flair came in and we, I mean, we just ribbed him really bad. But, but you know, just... Did you not like him? We, I, put it this way, me and Hawk talked a lot about I remember when he came in, me and Mike talked a lot about it, me and the guy, you know, the Minnesota guys, and Rick's a Minnesota guy. Yeah. Um, and we did talk a lot about it, but did we like him? Not really. Really? Um, and Rick, um, I mean, I, I really got no hate, but back then, um, you just, you would have backstabbed any of us in a New York second. And, uh, you know, Rick, Rick, uh, again, here's a guy that, yeah, I mean, he was over like a son of a gun. And in, in, he's a legend in North Carolina and so in that territory down there. But in New York, um, he kind of had to start at the halfway point and build himself up to the top again. And, and to me, um, his body was not up to par. I mean, he was sagging. He was an old man then. In 91. He, I mean, 31 years later, he might look as good as he does now as he did then. <laughs> I mean, he was sagging, but um, again, not the hate, but the truth. Flair's body looked like shit to be heavyweight champion of the world and have a body that looked like that and not be a shooter or a fighter or anything. It's all because of the blonde hair and in the interviews that Rick was smart that way. Mm -hmm. He did a great interview. His hair looked great, his robes. He nailed it on everything, but he did not work out enough. And his body looked like shit. How did, was his attitude when he came in? Was he humble? Was he, he was respectful? humble because he had to be humble. He came in to where all the sharks were around him, you know? He wasn't going to say nothing to nobody because, number one, he's, there were guys crazy enough to knock him out in the locker room, you know, really. And He uh, lost the safety net that he had in WCW. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're, now <laughs> you just be humble 
and now you wait it out. And Rich, that's what you do when you 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 outweigh them. Any guy, the in anything you do. If you can't beat them right there and then the first double days, you just outlast them, and that's what Rick has a good quality of doing. Hmm. Did he ever show signs of, like you said, maybe a little political maneuvering or backstabbing? Absolutely. Any instances you can recall? I wouldn't trust him for nothing. He tells freaking stories that ain't even true. He tells people he was down in Puerto Rico when Brody got killed. T Everybody knows that lie. Tony and I have talked about that. Yeah, Rick yeah, was... Yeah, this is ridiculous. He was on, booked on the Great American Bash Tour, and I, I think it was Charlotte that night, but somehow he made it to Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's just an absolute habitual liar. <laughs> I mean, the guy will lie... If, if the truth is easier, you know. Yeah. He, he no, he is a habitual liar. I know, I know, I know habitual liars, and I know one when I see one. Rick is one, and maybe he don't lie no more. And I do feel bad that he's old and he's frail, and he's <laughs> and all that shit. But I'm just glad he looks as good now as he did in 1991. Did you ever know him before WWF? Um, good question. Um, good question. Uh, no. No. Fair enough. No. All right. No, he never stopped by Rangan's camp. How I met a lot of guys is guy they stopped by Rangan's camp. Mm. Even Baron Von Roschke would stop by, wow. and Jimmy, and would train. But that—that that is the tell-all of all. If a guy's tough, he'll come to the camp and get a workout in. But Joe Laurinaitis, John Laurinaitis—they ain't coming to the camp. They'll get twisted in a knot, and they'll take it personal. A guy like Hawk. He comes to the camp, gets his ass kicked, and takes it like a man, and life goes on. He's still hot. He's a great guy. That's what I could never figure, and that's one thing you can't get over, is all you, you can go to the camp and get your ass kicked. And if your pride is going to make you not go there, then you've got an ego problem because it's no big deal. Everybody's got their ass kicked in their life. Yeah, good point. Uh, also that summer, we saw the debut of a very interesting uh, wrestler-manager duo, one of which lasted a couple of months, one of which lasted a couple of decades. Uh, Big Bully Busick debuted with his oh, manager, yeah. Harvey Whippleman. <laughs> I forgot. You know, I heard Bully passed. He did. Um, but it was just so funny, uh, you know, how the Iron Sheik talks. He, he would, just the way he would say it, we'd be laughing so hard like me and Steve Lombardi. And, and, and Lombardi had some bad raps on him, but Steve was a funny kid. And Steve came from the streets of Detroit. Did you he? Know? Yeah. And I think Patterson recruited him. Well, and, wouldn't be a surprise. Ow. I put a steak knife in my hand. Oh, did you? Yeah, well, that's like no a week ago. And I don't know if it's getting infected. Um, I got it. Anyways, but he would go, uh, I think we were doing the survivors or something, and, and the sheik would go, Billy Busick? Where's Billy Busick? And he would laugh so hard just the way he would say it. And Billy Busick was just, to me, he was like a guy that, I remember him being there for like two months. I remember him being there like two days. It was there a little longer than that, but yeah, he was originally on the, yeah. the promo photos that your team took for Survivor Series. Yeah, yeah. He was going to be on your team, but was ultimately replaced by Hercules. Do you remember why he left so quick? Just not his cup of tea, or? I don't know. Don't I think he might have got intimidated and just said, I'm getting the hell out of here. I got to, he probably had a good job at home waiting. Probably had a family business he left. 
and he had this dream of getting in, and he got in, and he said, this ain't going to work, I don't think. I'm a little intimidated, is my opinion. And why do you think Harvey Whippleman lasted so long? You're talking about several decades he was with the company. That's yeah. That's a pretty good run. That is a good run. Um, and there is a classic example of how does Harvey Whippleman last that long? I mean, no, no nothing, no talent even. <laughs> and it's not like he was some great manager, right? He was a terrible manager. He was, see, I always thought Slick was a terrible manager, and I told him that. I think <laughs> the I go, problem that you. he had with Slick was that he was so tall. I yeah. I think he kind of took away from some of his guys where he was so much bigger than them. Well, that's right. He had see, a good job about him. You hear about the height? You're, you know, you're, you're, we are talking about the height deal. The yeah. height deal is a whole subject you can talk about. Can't replace height. You can't get any taller, my friend. But anyways, yeah, Whipple, man, he had now good, one of my favorites. He had the great size, but for a manager, he just didn't have the gift to get. Nah. Just kind of that southern. Nah. Colossal bore ass. Yeah. Oh, oh, another one. Colossal bore ass. He'd bore you too? Oh, God. Ooh. Turn the channel. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, right now, we're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with the final segment of yet another installment of Wrestling Insider's Throwback Thursday with the Berserker, John right, Noyd. Stand you. by. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Insider's Party with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but... We're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you, without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling, and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Mighty Rockin' each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s Live Event and Legends Fan Fest, Saturday, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. See and meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champion Zaxx and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton, the Wild Berserker, the Indestructible Warlord, Dangerous Danny Davis, and if you great fans step up and get those VIP packages and tickets now, we'll add more 80s WWF Legends. VIPs take part in exclusive Q&A sessions in an 80s Legends group photo before doors open to all fans for an autograph photo fan fest and a night of hot in-ring action for memories that'll last a lifetime while helping our friends from Make-A-Wish. Tell your friends, tell your family, it's the wrestling celebration decades in the making. Lock in the best seats in the party now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live April 16th. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders in-studio shoot interviews on eBay with this brand new personally autographed WWE Royal Rumble 2021 11 by 14 poster signed by WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, his advocate Paul Heyman and Kevin Owens. Reigns and Owens battled for the Universal title in a last standing match January 31st in the Thunderdome in Tampa. This limited edition collector's poster is number 31 of only 50 produced. Comes with WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Also comes with an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas and a bonus autographed 8x10 photo. Get this rare, awesome collectible for your man cave and help keep wrestling legends working now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insider Stern, but fan during, during, 
Dan Marotti, maybe I'm turning into a colossal <laughs> boy, right. along with my partner in <laughs> You're John, not. the berserker John Nord. John, as we continue to plow through 91. Yeah, we are. Harvey Wimpleman, God, again, what a, a, a tenure he had. Yeah. He found him boring. There, sometimes there's no method. It's like life. Sometimes there's no method to the madness at all, and it works. And I think he found other tasks to do behind the scenes, which probably helped. Too. I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, another man that made his debut in the World Wrestling Federation, you talk about getting a fresh coat of paint, uh, the former fabulous one, Steve Curran, in is the Gator Man Skinner. I was so happy for Steve when he came in. He was a, he's a great guy, and he was just absolutely, I had a great time with him at some events earlier in the year, and, and uh, Steve is, you know, the story behind Steve's dad. No. Uh, you don't know about Kern's dad. Only guy that, when he was still alive, not too many years ago, that was a prisoner of war, of two wars, World two? War, two wars. It was either World War II and the Korean, or the Korean and Vietnam. Wow. But he was gone once for four years and another time for nine. And Steve, they showed him on national TV, Steve running up to him. Steve was a teenager. And he got off the plane, Mr. Kern, and I'm and 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 he got down on the runway and Steve, Dad, Dad, I love you. And Mr. Kern's going, is that you, Steve? Is that you, Steve? Oh, you know, it blind? was just so overwhelming. No. It oh, was he didn't just, even recognize He was him. just so overwhelmed oh. with it all. And it was a really a heartfelt story. Steve told it to me a couple times because I loved it. And I read the book. Um, they, he was referred to as Pop Kern uh, as far as because he was older in camp. But... Uh, Steve, just just absolutely, uh, and I met Mr. Kern, I think it was in, in Miami Arena in 91, and uh, uh, what he had been through, when I looked into his eyes, you could tell in his eyes he had something. He had been through a threshold of pain that was beyond the pale. They were steel blue. He was old, not not super old, like 95, but he was, you know, I'm sure he was in the 70s, late 70s, and his eyes told the whole story. It was like a movie. It was in his eyes. I seen it in his eyes. And that's what I did with Mr. Kern. And you want to say, I got down on a knee and I said, thank you, Mr. Did Kern, you really? For, for my freedom. Isn't yes, good, I did. Yeah. Good for you. And, and uh, uh, me and Stan Hansen used to talk about it a lot. And, and uh, Steve laughed, speaking of this time with Kern. And uh, we were at the, what, the Survivor Series, right? And Steve was on the thing. And some fan comes walking by. And he looks at me, he goes, hey, Skinner, can I have your autograph? And I go, I says, hey, asshole. First of all, Skinner's a foot shorter. <laughs> and I'm 100 pounds heavier. And Kern's in back of me, he's laughing so hard. So now, of course, Steve, every time I see him, he brings up that story. And it was funny. But it was, it was a true story. But the fan was was being, uh, he wasn't being funny, he was being real. But Kern, of course, just loves it because he is a lot yeah, smaller, smaller than, than me. you. Yeah, that's yeah, good yeah. But um, Steve is very, very uh, religious now, pastor, loves oh, really? the Lord. Wow. Oh, yeah, very much so. And Steve uh, uh, yeah, had a little speech at this deal I was at, and, he started, you know, broke down and started crying. Well, you know? but, uh, yeah. Also that summer, one of the opponents on the house show loop, 
a former Killer B in the World Wrestling Federation, Jumping Jim Brunzel. Jumping Jim. Wrestled in Madison Square Garden, I did know. Did you? Yes, I did. I must have been in late 92 or something, but Jimmy Brunzel is one of the best guys you could ever meet. I don't know of anybody who's ever said anything bad. He sold these drops of oil that was a scam a minute. Oh, what a scam. Jimmy, Jimmy. I'd say that is the biggest scam. All the boys were buying them. You know, you put it on your tongue and that was going to help you get stronger or whatever. And I just left. He sold them. But J Jimmy is a legit, like, he's a choir boy. He's a boy scout. He was, he was a... Uh, Bob Steins, who was my agent for the when I was with the Generals, and he was a middle linebacker for the Kansas City Chiefs, was Jimmy's uh, college roommate at the University of Minnesota, mm -hmm. and Jimmy was a high jumper. So that's why he got the Jim, jumping Jim Brunzel. Good talent. It Jimmy just, is. I think I, when they separate. He just don't look like he can hurt anybody. Right. He you like could he swat to Jimmy. Me. You could swat Jimmy and Greg Gagne like flies. That's what I was just going to say. He looked like he belonged back in the AWA at yeah, that point. And yeah, and they did great because they were Vern's son. Yeah, and they got pushed, and they were the high, they were the high flyers. They were over, but it's because they had you know 180 pound guys chasing three 300 pound guys out of the ring. Come on, you know? But, and I used to say that to them guys, but they would laugh. Jimmy don't have an ego problem at all. Though. He, he's a wonderful guy. Don't have a bad word to say about him. Just a great guy. It was time. And holy what? smokes, does he look good. 71 years old. You'd never guess he was that age. Yeah, yeah he looks 50. Yeah, ah, he found the fountain of youth. 45. Maybe it were those drops he was selling. Well, Who knows? He, he, and you know, he had a big cocaine problem. Did uh, he? In his 30s. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Big. $50,000 a year, he said. Wow. Yeah. He'll tell That's a pretty you. big cocaine problem. Yeah, he'll tell you about it. Wow. Uh, I don't know how much of this you guys would get to see where you were on the road so much, but Jake the Snake Roberts turned heel. Um, he was trying to metamorphosize the Ultimate Warrior to prepare him for the dark side with The Undertaker, and then through these series of vignettes, yeah. turned uh, to side with The Undertaker and Paul Bear against The Ultimate Warrior. I thought it was some really cool, evil-looking stuff. Did you guys even get a chance to, to see stuff like that we when you were out on the road? We didn't get that much of a chance, but I know what you're talking about, and I agree with you that it was pretty cool. It was evil, and it was because Jake was coordinating yeah. it. Jake is a genius on, on pro wrestling. Um, I don't say that, and you know how I am. Right, I'm a honest. pretty negative dude. I, I don't like a lot of guys, but I love everyone, if that makes sense. But Jake, God, I got to hand it to him. Man, what a talent. And a talent that is a six foot six basketball player with, with two left feet. But the way he slithers out of the ring and the, his standard moves are unreplaceable. Yep. Nobody can do them like Jake. Yeah, it's a shame right? that the... Right, I agree with you on that. It's a shame that it didn't have the legs that it should have. I thought it was really going to develop into a, a, a hot, 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 hot program. But yeah. as we go a few weeks further, SummerSlam 91, the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, in the main event... Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior defeated Sergeant Slaughter, uh, General Adnan and Colonel Mustafa in a handicap match with Sid as the guest referee. Uh, the show ended with the Hulkster and Sid posing as Ultimate Warrior slowly chased the Sheik and Adnan Al Casey back to the locker room. Uh, big night of scandal, though. Ultimate wow. Warrior in the TV taping leading up to yeah. the event. Not only did WWF have these steroid issues to worry about, but right. now Ultimate Warrior is trying to hold them up for Hogan money. Wow. Hey, listen, just I forgot what the main event was. Um, uh, how in the hell does Sergeant Slaughter get main event and Mustafa... 
Is that his name? Colonel or Mustafa. Or Adnan. And, and she, yeah, and General Adnan. And these guys get main event. Do you see what I'm talking about? These guys were not even necessarily that over. For, uh, Sid? Yeah, Sid makes sense. And he was the ref. Hogan, definitely. Warrior, definitely. But the guys they wrestled? I thought was were cheesy. They had <laughs> run their fucking race. Um, come on, Mustafa or and Adnan. Nobody <laughs> gives a shit about that Iran shit anymore. Back then, it was a, it was terrible. The war was over. Oh, I was terrible. It Do was absolutely terrible. But that's what you. That's what we keep saying is. They will do the stupidest shit. It could have been so much better, but they get something in their head and they're going to freaking do it for some reason. Maybe they don't have to pay them guys that much. But, but uh, you know, why wouldn't you have way better talent? Right. That could have a way better match. These guys can't. They can't move around. You know, why not have Kurt Henning as a, as in there against them? And you're going to have a match then. You're going to match, right. Right. And, but no, you got that. And that's, again, that's what we were taught. Kurt Henning taught me that right away. I broke in, actually. I farted around in it in 83 when I was with the generals. But then I went to camp in 84, but Kurt would always be preaching to me because he came back from Portland, and he would always be preaching to me about, hey, do it this way. you got to have a good match. you got to cave fave. You walk in the McDonald's, and you don't say this. You never, don't ever be around a heel. Or heel should never be around the baby faces. And that's why Kurt was respected so much. Uh, because he cared about the business and he cared about doing stuff the right way. And Kurt would come in and get his ass kicked in the wrestling room. And that's what you call paying your dues. That's why Kurt Henning was Kurt Henning. Do you think Warrior was worth the money that he was trying to get from Vince to be paid on par with Hogan? Hell no. Yeah. Hell no. No, no, no. You can get a lot. Of, first of all, Warrior really couldn't work that good. He could bounce around and he got a hell of an entrance. Um, but if you think about it, he couldn't work like, a, you know, Somebody like uh, Kurt Henning, Bret Hart, or your average guy, Tito yeah. Santana. He just, he, he, he was, and, and was he worth it? No, because he wasn't worth the trouble. He was, oh, I got to have my own locker room, and this, and that, and onward, and upward, and he just, it's just bullshit. And he's lucky he didn't get his ass kicked in the locker room. Well, once that was learned, I know Hogan wanted to have the Sheik try and uh, not Do make him what? humble, but to take out a leg or something along those lines if he could. Do you think that Vince made the right call to fire the Warrior as Hogan and Sid were posing in the ring and Warrior charged to the locker room chasing the Sheik and adding on LKC? He, he, and then he fired him? He fired him that night at SummerSlam, yeah. I didn't know that. I right did call? Not, I did not know that. That is good for Vince. You like that? I like that. He would go back to him several months later when he became desperate due to the steroid issues, but we're yeah. going to get there as the timeline goes on. But as of SummerSlam 91, Hogan and Sid were posing to the crowd, and Vince gave one of the first, uh, before Mr. McMahon became a character, you're fired right at MSG to the Warrior. The what? You know how Vince, his character goes, you're fired. Oh, yeah. That's what he yeah, said to yeah. the Warrior when the yep. Warrior came through the curtain. Well, let me tell you, it's funny how all the guys are, it's always the same thing. Always in every business, not only in wrestling, but in everywhere. When you, 
you can be a car salesman if you sell 30 cars one month all of a sudden you start you thinking you're irreplaceable you're not the customers are still going to come they're still going to sell cars and it's still going to be the same way and you're totally replaceable and that's what the warrior learned he learned it the hard way just like the rest of us have got to learn our lumps the hard way and he was humble enough to come and you can bet he was praying and begging for his job back all right well wrestling fans we are running out of time yet again we'll be back after this brief time out to wrap up the show stand all by right Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now for Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s Live Event and Legends Fan Fest, Saturday, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. See and meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champion Zax and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton, the Wild Berserker, the Indestructible Warlord, Dangerous Danny Davis, and if you great fans step up and get those VIP packages and tickets now, we'll add more 80s WWF Legends. VIPs take part in exclusive Q&A sessions in an 80s Legends group photo before doors open to all fans for an autograph photo fan fest and a night of hot in-ring action for memories that'll last a lifetime while helping our friends from Make-A-Wish. Tell your friends, tell your family, it's the wrestling celebration decades in the making. Lock in the best seats in the party now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live April 16th. Fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Party with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you, without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling, and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep mighty rocking each and every Thursday night. It hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns, and... A new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College, March 26. Tickets and superstar experience packages on sale now. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over BostonWrestling.com and our social media, but Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. Arguably the greatest professional wrestler of all time. Get this limited edition collector's autograph print personally signed by two-time WWE Hall of Famer Nature Boy Ric Flair inscribed 16 times for each of his recognized world championship reigns. One of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE. Also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome Ric Flair collectible for your wrestling collection now all right wrestling fans time flies when you're having fun another interesting episode of wrestling inside is throwback thursday with john nord the berserker uh we started to scratch the surface of one half of the main event of SummerSlam 1991. We're going to be back next week talking about the other half of the main event and so many other interesting happenings around that time frame. For my partner in crime, the Berserker Joy Nord, I'm Dan Marotti. We'll see you next Thursday night. Until then, you and yours be well, be healthy. Good night from Boston. Take care. Hi, this is Phil DeCesare. Thank you for enjoying tonight's Wrestling Insiders. Get early full screen ad free access to all our weeknight Wrestling Insider episodes while helping keep wrestling legends working by joining the Boston Wrestling Patreon family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. You can directly help us bring you more great historical wrestling content seven days a week to enjoy for years to come.